Hi, so sorry for being missing in action for a very long time, but I've been quite busy recently. I've got some exams coming up and all the rest of it, but I've got no excuses, I've just been lazy. We'll whack out videos soon. With the Jiro coming up, it's some easy content to make. So I've got a couple of things I want to talk about today, but first of all, we're going to talk about Chris Room, then we're going to talk about the Jiro, and then we're going to talk about what I'm going to plan to make content-wise during the Jiro. So number one, Chris Room made a video saying he's had enough of the haters, saying that he won't be able to perform, etc, etc. And I've decided that he probably does include me making a video saying Chris Room will never win the Tour de France again. All right, so you might think, okay, well, why have you made, well, why did I make the video, etc. Et but I think we got to, we got to have the key thing. So Chris Room in a very bad crash, right? He's getting back to his best. And my whole point was that, number one, he's aging a lot, right? So even if he managed to get back to like his best at that age, that's going to be worse than when he was when he was like 32 or 30 or 28. Like, he, he's gonna get worse. He thinks he probably won't, but unless you're Valverde, you probably are gonna get worse. Number two, he's had so long off racing. Like, you think, like, he basically had, like, two years without racing a Grand Tour, and now he's getting back into it. And, like, yeah, he's gonna get stronger, but, like, that time is not, like, you know, for me, for instance, when I'm a big crash, like, it's chill because I'm getting better. Like, I haven't lost time, but he's lost time where he could have kept his condition the same. So that's why it's gonna be really hard for him to get back to his level, to the same level. So for those two reasons, I don't think Chris Room is going to get back to his level. But, and this is a big but, but let's say he does. Let's say Chris Room gets back to whacking like 480 watts up the um, Madon, which I think he said he did. It's about 6.7 watts per kilo or so. You know, stupid numbers. Well, the question is, is he actually going to win a Tour de France? And I think no. And I've got some decisive data up here. Uh, so Tour de France, stage 17, finished in 2020. Finished up Col de la Loz. I've got it up here. I'll put it up on the, in front of my face. And... The last climb of the day, Cola Loss, 22k at 8%, right? So basically an hour of climbing. They did it at 5.9 watts per kilo, okay? And this was a tough stage. They went up uh, the Mad Col de la Madeleine before at about 6 watts per kilo. And then the last climb they did at 6 watts per kilo. And the very last part was really steep and they did it at 6.1. And this was up to, what, 2,100 meters of climbing. So basically the level is very, very high. An hour at 6 watts per kilo, after for Sepp 3,800 kilojoules. I mean, that's a lot, like that, that's, that's huge. Like that is like world-class ridiculous numbers, right? And so we're gonna compare this to 2015, where in my opinion, peak Chris Room, 2015, people may argue it's slightly later, but in my opinion, it's 2015. And now in 2015, the stage where he put the most time into Quintana, he put a minute and a bit into Quintana, was the La Pierre de, Pierre de Saint Martin, right? Now this climb, is 13 kilometers at eight and a half percent, doesn't get up to 2,000 meters, maybe 1,600 meters. Robert Hessing uploaded his power data. He said 5.7 watts per kilo, and Froome bin him by a decent amount. Froome admitted, which it maybe will be his detriment now because he actually should have told the truth. He said he did 5.8 watts per kilo at this climb, which I think is wrong. I think he probably did six. So let's say he did six. We're going to pretend that his lies before were wrong and that he didn't do 5.8 unless his power meter under reads because I don't understand how he could beat someone by like a minute and a half, Hessing, or two minutes, which he said he did 5.7. And apparently he'll do 0.1 watt per kilo more. And everyone else on the day uh, was also saying that don't think it was 5.8. But even if it was six watts per kilo, which, you know, is just my estimations, six watts per kilo for 40 minutes is really good. But the stage was very easy. The normalized before the stage was about 260 watts, average of 190. Not very hard, really. I don't I don't want to be rude, but it really isn't that hard. 260 watts, like, it's not that crazy hard. Kilojoules wise, obviously, Hessing's a bit bigger, so it's two and a half thousand kilojoules, probably similar to Froome. And like, that's a very high level. There's no doubt about it. But this was what, stage 14, I think it was, or something? Not quite, quite early on, maybe stage 11, I think it could have been. And this was in the last week, hardest thing in the 2021 2020 tour and i just don't think chris Froome would be able to compete with the slovenians they're just a different level like even not the slovenians but everyone like everyone's whacking like set Kuz six watts per kilo for an hour at the end of the stage i haven't seen like chris Froome was not doing that like he just wasn't he was doing like high 5.8 six watts per kilo and people were like oh it's stratospheric and like set Kuz obviously had a great result i think he got fourth maybe but Miguel Angel Lopez won, and then Roglic, um, sorry, Pogaccia was second, I believe. Might be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's right. Uh, and I think Pogaccia can bin Chris Froome in a CT, easy, way more idle uh, than, than Froome these days. Can bin him in a sprint, ain't no competition. Bin him on short climbs. I think long climbs, where Chris Froome traditionally had his best thing, 
I don't think there's much in it. And I also don't think Chris Room's generally like his ability in terms of like being really good in three weeks. Well, Pogacar's only done two Grand Tours and he seems pretty good in the third week, having won a stage or the last stage in the um, in the Vuelta before the, the easy day on the last one and got a third uh, in the 2019 Vuelta. And then the Tour, last stage, won it and been Roglic. So I wouldn't really say Chris Room's natural advantage of being really strong in the third week is really going to help. So that's my thought about Chris Room. I think, number one, I don't think he's going to get back to the same point. And like, fair play to the lad. He's got back from big injuries. But like, I'm not really sure that that's not the same as being as good as he was, which was outrageous. Um, so yeah, I love Chris Room. He is a big boy. He's a legend. Um, and I think maybe I've out-recovered him. But anyway, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that later. It's number two, Giro predictions. Uh, I didn't think there's any point in me making one. GCN made one. Lantern Rouge made one. A couple other people made one. I ain't got time to go through stages. You know what you do. Go on Pro Cycling Stats. Look to the hilly ones. Those are the ones you want to watch. The one, the gravel stage, Montalcino, that'll be good. Basically, predictions. I'm not. I'm, I'm backing Bernal on my fantasy team, but I'm a bit worried about him. Back injuries don't seem to be great, and Sivakov seems to be talking up his chance of leading it a lot. So I think Bernal might not be the one. But anyway, Yates, I think he's not going to. He's going to crack. He looks really good, but then it's just like Yates has either like. The only Grand Tour he won, he didn't face great people like Mass, Lopez, Valverde, Quintana, and he battered them all in the Vuelta in 2018. But I don't think he's got the, the top, top level. Carthy, very, very, think he's going to do well. Just solid bloke, good at climbing, likes the long, steep ones. As Lantern said, it is one. Likes the long ranges. TTing, good. No worries. Lander, I think it looks pretty good. Strong team. Pelo Bilbao, Damiano Caruso, very, very strong. Vlasov will do well. Um, Remco is a mystery. Um, but I think it's quite open. I don't think there's one clear favourite, really. I think Remco, v- v- Bernal, Yates, Carthy, Lander, for me, are all the same. I think it's really hard to tell between them just because they all have their flaws and they all have their weaknesses. There isn't one complete GC contender, in my opinion. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to be pretty excited. Tomorrow's TT um, is going to be really good. I think Cavani is going to win it. I don't think I don't think Ghana will. Ghana seems to be a little bit off the boil, but maybe he's just honing his form. Uh, before the Giro, obviously it's probably his biggest target to win the Mario Rosa again, like last year, but we will see. Uh, so yeah, in terms of footage, and so, so in terms of content for the Giro, we'll, we'll probably get some tech reviews for tomorrow for the TT. Looks like some big chain rings are uh, going to be there, a lot of custom equipment, so that'll be exciting. Probably a bit of power analysis here or there. Any sort of controversy, we'll definitely have to try and have some videos about it um, and all the rest. They're not going to be that frequent, I'm not going to lie. I can't go full-time like I did in the tour where I just whacked out videos left, right and centre because my exams are on the 14th, well, 2nd of the 14th of June, so I'm big stress, big stress, and I'm pretending to ride a bike as well, which isn't going very well at the moment. But anyway, we'll ignore that. Uh, so yeah, that's basically all, all that's going to happen in the next month or so of May to the end of June. Once it's the 14th of June, well, all chaos reigns loose, 25-hour weeks, 20 hours on YouTube, and just all the rest of it. It's going to be, it's going to be outrageous. So anyway, bear with me for a little bit. 14th of June, we'll be back on it, and whole of summer, I reckon, we're just going full-time YouTube, make some good. So anyway, cheers for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.